Good morning. Oh, I didn't wait for the bell. <laughs> it's good to have you worshiping with us this morning. Uh, hopefully you can stay warm as we uh, have a warm welcome for you. I uh, ask that you please add to your prayers uh, the family of Marlis Junkie, uh, past member of Good Shepherd. Her funeral was last Thursday or last Saturday. So please remember that family in your prayers. And uh, we, inv we ask that you remember the Torres family in your prayers. Uh, Isaac and Gloria both passed away. And so um, they are meeting with uh, the funeral home to uh, make arrangements. And we will let you know of those arrangements as soon as we find out. Uh, the high school youth will be collecting a free will offering after the service. They'll be at uh, both exits and downstairs for the coffee, coffee hour. And the money collected will um, go to the funeral home to help defray costs of the funeral. So we invite you to please keep the family in your prayers and to um, help care for these members of our community. Also, I want to call your attention to uh, our Wednesday night service. Uh, that's at 615. There's no activities, but we will worship together Wednesday evening at 615. Also, tomorrow on the 19th, we have a grief share group surviving the holidays. And that's from 6 to 8 p.m. They will meet in the old nursery and council will meet at 6.30 in the kitchenette. And also want to call your attention on Tuesday, there's beer and hymns from 6.30 to 8, sponsored by Good Earth Village. And uh, I didn't see where it's at. It's in Albert Lee at... Uh, Oh, 112 on Broadway. Okay. I didn't know if that was a house or a... It's, oh, 112 is a restaurant. It's, it's a bar grill on Main Street. Wonderful. 112 Broadway. So, beer and hymns. And then uh, I'd like to call attention. Our, we're having a Thanksgiving um, community dinner. <laughs> Brian, what are you doing? No, that's Christmas. This is Thanksgiving I'm talking about. We're having Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness, I got my weeks mixed up. Months, I think, Brian. What's let everybody know about this week's event. We have the great community Thanksgiving meal. We oh, the Thanksgiving community dinner. Yes. What time is that? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. A.M. or P.M.? 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. or a little thereafter. Flexible. They're very flexible um, for feasting and fellowship. All right. Well, I give thanks to Brian's putting this together. Now, will you have beef or? I think we'll stick with turkey. Okay, great, great. We'll save the rib roast or the rump roast for yeah, Christmas. Yeah. All right. I'm going to enjoy it. Thanks, Brian. Bring out Thanksgiving. <laughs> If you are willing to volunteer, please let Brian know. Otherwise, come and feast and fellowship with our community. And thank you to Gary Hagan, our assisting minister this morning. I really appreciate it. I invite you to please stand as we sing together our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, 705 in the Red Book.
how many wives out there made coffee this morning. I, I have news for you. You don't have to do that job again because in the Bible it says Hebrews. Hebrews. So, remember that. Confession and forgiveness. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the sake of justice and kindness, we confess our sins before God and one another. A moment for silence and reflection. Merciful God, too often we come before you with our pious actions and our empty words. We fail to live with kindness, justice, and humility. We turn on our neighbors and build up for ourselves. Forgive our selfish actions and transform us into people who are to call your own. The abundant grace of our God does transform lives from the inside out. Receive today the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Be transformed in your bodies, souls, and minds. Be molded into God's renewed creatures for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together the prayer of the day. God of justice, you sent your servant Micah to proclaim justice and peace to a world that lacked both. Make us instruments of peace so that your world might prosper. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the kids to please come forward. Good to see you. You can have a seat. Thanks for coming up. I know a lot of the kids are away having Thanksgiving at other people's houses. So it's so good to have you guys here. Are you cold? Do you like snow? Yeah. All right. You went snowmobiling already? Way to make good use of the snow. That's fantastic. And the kitty cat. You gave the kitty cat a ride. Did you buckle him in? No. OK. Oh, it's just a snowmobile. That's right. My fault. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Micah. Have you ever known somebody named Micah? That's a book in the Bible. He was a prophet and he told people about God and how much God loved them. And you know the Israelites, the people of God, the people that worship God, thought they were the best people in the world. And guess what? They started bullying each other and being mean to each other. And they wanted to be the number one people. And they said, God loves us better than everybody else. Do you think that's true? Does God love everybody the same? Yeah. God loves us all the same. And so Micah was trying to tell the people that. And he told them, you need to be fair. And you need to be kind. And you need to love God and put God number one. So how could you be fair? Have you ever seen somebody bullying somebody else? Okay, bowling. Yes, I'm talking about bullying. <laughs> Have you ever seen a bully? If, if you saw somebody bullying somebody else what could you do yeah okay you could go help them or if you heard somebody calling somebody else names could you tell them to stop calling people names what's a way you could be kind how can you show kindness be nice to people absolutely very good and to your sister too right are you always nice to your sister? And you're always nice to your brother? You never fight. That's great. 
<laughs> we'll check on that later. <laughs> and are you nice to Brody? Yeah. All right, good. That's what we're called to do, to be nice to everybody. And how can you make God number one in your life? What do you think you could do? Be kind, yeah. And to care about other people. And by coming to church and learning more about God, that's great. You guys did great. So let's pray together and to remember to be kind, to be fair, and to put God number one, okay? And the congregation can help us. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to love others, to be kind, to share what we have and make you number one in our life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good job. You can go to Sunday school now if you'd like. The psalm reading today is Psalm 18, verses 1 through 6 and 48. I will read the light print and you will read the dark. I love you, O Lord, my strength. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So I shall be saved from my enemies. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. Who delivered me from my enemies? Indeed, you exalted me above my adversaries. You delivered me from the violent. Here ends the psalm reading. Our Bible story is from Micah 5. 
verses 2 through 5, and Micah 6, verses 6 through 8. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall not live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. They shall rule the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod with the drawn sword. They shall rescue us from the Syrians if they come. I'm sorry, that's not the correct reading. It's six, six through eight. Because it's one of my favorite Bible verses. Does somebody have a cell phone? Micah six, six through eight, as you may know, is of what, what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. But so often we forget the first part of that. That's one of my favorite Bible verses. But so often we forget the first part of Micah 6, 8, which says, He has told you, O mortal, what is good. You know, so often we say, I do what I need to do. I follow God's will for my life. I love God. I will do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God. But the Israelites were used to being in the promised land. They were used to being number one in charge. But now they were fighting against each other and things were falling apart and they were being conquered by other people. They wanted God to make them number one again. To be the top people. To be the ones that God loved the most. So Micah the prophet came to tell them you're wrong. God loves us all the same. And that didn't sit well with them. Because you see, they were offering a thousand rams. That certainly will put them number one with God. Oil. Their firstborn son. That'll make them number one. But we forget that first part. He has told you, O oh mortal, we're not God. We're not God. We're mortals. We sin and we fall short of God's glory. We're all chosen by God. God claims us all as sons and daughters of God. And what does he require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And we say we're doing that. But how many of us, when our parents said, go clean your room, and how did we answer? What? And what did our parents say? You know what. Can I go out and play? Did you clean your room? Yeah. Did you clean your room like I 
wants you to clean your room. <clears throat> oh, mortals, you know what is good. You know what God has asked of us. But yet, we judge and we justify our actions. Were you mean to your brother and sister? Yeah, but they started it. Yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, but they don't deserve it. I've worked hard for everything I've gotten. You know what? There's no yeah buts in God's family. We know what is good and what is right. But it's so hard for us to do that. To be forgiving and loving. I asked the high school kids when it says to walk a mile in someone else's shoes, what does that mean? Does it mean to literally walk with them for a mile I couldn't walk in anybody else's shoes but we decided it meant to spend time with them to get to know them to get to understand them but we have so many excuses because they're not our kind of people we use the abbots no every single person is a child of God and we are called to love them as God loves them. No excuses. To not judge them. To understand them means to spend time with them. Yeah, but no. Enough. Stop is what Micah is telling the Israelites. Stop treating people that way is what he tells us. I was at a funeral, uh, did a funeral for a non-member at the funeral home Thursday for Wanda Marie Brandt. And there was this eight-year-old, Novea Joe. And I asked if anybody wanted to say something. And she said, I would, I'll say something. Eight years old. And I said, oh, okay, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to say. And so we talked a little bit about it. She goes, I'm going to say how much I loved her and how I wish she was here. And I said, she is. She knows how much you love her. And she is here with you. Hmm, she said. Okay. And then she said, I don't know if I can say anything. And I said, well, thank you for offering and just look at me and come up if you want to. So I offered the opportunity and she came right up. She goes, Pastor, where's the microphone? And I said, uh, there is none, you know, because it's a smaller group. She goes, well, um, I need a microphone because if I'm talking to a crowd of people, eight years old, mind you, if I'm talking to a crowd of people, I get kind of shy and, you know, I need to project my voice. I said, oh, yeah, um, I'll stand by you and I think they'll be able to hear you. And so she said, I miss Grandma. And she got tears in her eyes. And she looked at me and she said, but I know Grandma's with us, great Grandma. And I know we're together. We're together, all of us. Every single one of us is loved and forgiven and blessed. At the luncheon, she asked me if I liked working at the cemetery. <laughs> and I said, well, that's part of my job. I'm a pastor at the church. But do you like working at the cemetery? <laughs> I thought, we may not get past this. I, I said, but I, I get to marry people, and I get to have baptisms for babies. And she had to think about that. And she said, you do a lot of stuff. Yeah. 
I sat at the table with the teenagers, her cousins, and we talked about, uh, it came up about fairness. What is fair? And how we're supposed to be forgiving. And I talked about, well, that's my sermon on Sunday. And, and they offered that sometimes it's hard to forgive somebody that's wronged you. And I had talked about, talked with our high school kids at breakfast club and, and I said, can you smile at people and say hi and have a good day? Oh yeah. And I said, what about somebody that's done you wrong or that you're irritated with? No. Wait a minute. We're called to be kind to everybody, to be forgiving, to be loving, to treat everybody as God treats us. Now, it was hard to do. So we're to do the uncomfortable. And people said, as we often do, it's not fair. That's not fair. And what do our parents say to us then? Life isn't fair. Don't give me that. And what do we say? Well, I said, well, apparently it's more fair in other people's houses than it is here. To be forgiving, life isn't fair. But we've been blessed, we've been loved, we've been forgiven so that we can be a blessing to others. And little eight-year-old Novea looked at me and she said, I know the answer. I said, oh? She said, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I went, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. And I said, can I use that? Can I use that in my sermon? She goes, what? I said, I'm preaching on Sunday and I'd like to use that because that goes perfectly. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And she said, Pastor, you have to put more attitude into it. <laughs> you need a little bit more sass. So she got up from the table and showed me what I was supposed to do. So, Novea, I hope I do it right. You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> That's it. We have been loved and forgiven and blessed. To be a blessing to others, to be kind to others, to be forgiving to others, to bring people in, to care for others, so that we confess and proclaim with our lips, not just with our lips, but with our lives. Oh God, you are our God, and we will ever praise you. We will seek you in the morning, and we will learn to walk in your way. And step by step, you'll lead us. And we will follow you all of our days. And we will follow you all of our days. And we will follow you all of our days. And step by step, you'll lead us. And we will follow you all of our days. We can't do it alone but we know that we are loved and we are forgiven and blessed. And what is required of us is to let others know that they are loved and forgiven and blessed, to be kind and gracious and forgiving and giving, knowing that Christ goes with us every step of the way. And to that good news, we can all say, Amen. That was kind of weak. Give some sass to it. 
We can all say amen. Amen. Very good. I invite you to please stand. As we sing together, we are called. this time we will recite the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 105 in the front of your red book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace.
This weekend, our youth director, Beth Hagen, and Pastor May gathered together with energetic students in grades four through seven. Your offering dollars provide for these skilled staff members to provide activities for our youth to gather together to not only have fun, but also to come together to learn more about God's love in their life. Your generous gifts help provide for youth events and youth staff. Thank you for your faithful giving. I invite you to please stand and as we sing together our offertory 693 come ye thankful people come may be seated for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God, 
in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. The prayer response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the families in California who have lost loved ones, their homes, and their way of life. Surround them with your comfort and care and help them rebuild their homes and their lives. Thank you for firefighters and rescue workers and all who put their lives on the line for others. Lord, in your mercy, loving God, we thank you for the blessings we have received. Help us to use the resources we have for the good of all and to seek peace and justice in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, we pray for the Therese family at the loss of Isaac and Gloria. Surround them with your love and comfort, and comfort them in their grief. We pray also for the family of Marlis Junkie, who passed away this past week. We pray for Bebo Getchell, Ellen Hunt, and all those we name silently in our hearts. We pray for your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we pray in your precious Son's name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed. I invite you to please stand. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are invited to come to the table who believe in the everlasting promises, the life-giving body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please come forward as the ushers direct you. We have in the center empty cups that the assistants will fill, or if you prefer, we have grape juice on the side in the, on, on the side block. Um, we also have gluten-free wafers. Please ask your server. Come and eat, come and drink the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please stand. <coughs> the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Go and do good. Love one another, forgive one another, and show how blessed each person is as a child of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our sending song, On Our Way Rejoicing. serve the Lord.